Craving the perfect holiday snack? Check out Farmer Bill's Biltonk. Think beef jerky, but better. No sugar, no preservatives, just pure animal protein goodness. Crafted from premium grass-fed beef or bison and air-dried to perfection, Farmer Bill's Biltong is nutrient-packed, energy-dense, and perfect for an on-the-go treat or a standout snack for your next party. My favorite is the original bison, but the other flavors like the original beef, smokehouse, and spicy chili have me second-guessing that choice more than once. Visit FarmerBillsProvisions.com to grab a one-pound slab or a variety pack and use code BIZBIT10 for 10% off. Farmer Bills Biltong, don't be the two-liter guy at this year's Christmas party. Welcome to the Business Bitcoinization Show, the show dedicated to helping you enrich your life and grow your business with Bitcoin, the hardest money on planet Earth. I'm your host, Josh Friedemann, and our guest today is Michael Atwood, who's the co-founder and CEO of Oshi. If you're a business owner and you not only want to accept Bitcoin in your business, but want to incentivize customers to pay in Bitcoin, you're going to love Oshi. And if you're a Bitcoiner who wants to see more businesses in your area accepting Bitcoin, you are going to love Oshi as well. We're going to get to our interview with Michael right after this. Business owners, unlock the benefits Bitcoin has to offer your business with the Bitcoin for Business Quick Start Guide. This 27-page guide highlights the six ways you can grow your business with Bitcoin. Check it out in the show notes. Michael, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Josh. Thanks for having me. So I like to start off every single interview with a few questions that help us to get to know you a little bit better and give us some insight for our own lives. Are you ready for these? Absolutely. When and how did you first learn about Bitcoin? Yeah, so I uh, I got involved in 2017, um, you know, n- near the top. And uh, I immediately started, you know, looking into Bitcoin. And then I went straight for all the different altcoins, uh, often named the shitcoins, uh, like, like many others do. And, um, you know, I, I effectively got wrecked. And then I took a deeper dive into Bitcoin. Uh, in early 2018, mid 2018, I was fully down the rabbit hole, uh, looking for ways in which I can kind of leverage uh, my own, you know, personal strengths to help drive more Bitcoin adoption, specifically over uh, Lightning Network, uh, which I found really fascinating. And we haven't talked much about Lightning Network on the show. We've mentioned it a couple of times. We're going to get into that a little bit in just a second because I think it really opens up a lot of opportunities, especially for what you're doing at Oshi. But the next question is this, what's an insight or fact about Bitcoin you wish everyone understood? I wish everyone just understood money. Uh, because honestly, that's that's one of the biggest precursors, generally speaking, for someone to understand Bitcoin. You first have to ask, what is money? And if you don't know what money is, it's going to be a little more difficult at the current time we're in to like really grok Bitcoin and understand Bitcoin. Uh, fortunately, with a lot of these more recent developments of say, like, like we talked about Lightning Network and uh, the more mainstream it, it's gotten as well, whether due to Lightning Network or just simply more and more people talking about it, um, people are going to be able to come into Bitcoin other than just that money aspect or other just an investment aspect. It's able to kind of kind of take root and whether it's like beef, you know, with the, with the beef initiative, farming and ranching, whether it's, you know, more tech stuff or local commerce, um, or it is like inflation or it's taking root in other countries. Um, so, you know, I wish, I wish people understood money. But fortunately, Bitcoin is taking root in all aspects of everything money touches. Uh, mm. So it's no longer a precursor anymore. What is the Bitcoin resource that you most recommend to other people? Oh, man. This is a tough one. So for the longest time, I would say, look, you just need to read the Bitcoin standard and and shut up for a bit and just read it. Uh, You Mm -hmm. know, you read it. But again, most people don't care about the history of money. It doesn't it doesn't get them going. For me, I've always taken an interest in economics from a young age and like money and entrepreneurship and whatever. Most people don't care. You know, my my personal thing was I read Atlas Shrugged. Like randomly, uh, I was like backpacking in Patagonia, like listening to Atlas Shrugged on audiobook, just, you know, figuring things out. And uh, then a few weeks later, or a month later, I was backpacking in Yosemite, uh, listening to the Bitcoin standard. So like that's a knockout one, two, totally down the rabbit hole. We can't expect most people to, 
to go there. I mean, uh, something that I like to recommend people because it provides like audiobooks and videos and podcasts and there's there's different uh, different avenues, but it's it's just Bitcoin dash resources dot com. Okay. It's kind of just an aggregation of fantastic Bitcoin content so that hopefully somebody going there can find their place in Bitcoin. <laughs> Maybe it's not money. Maybe, you know, they don't they, they don't care about inflation. Maybe they love government. So maybe that's not their their thing. Maybe they don't want to read Rothbard. But maybe they can find something that, that makes sense for them. I hadn't heard of that yet, so I'll have to check it out for myself. And I think that's a, a, a great resource to have. I will say I love Atlas Shrugged so much. I recommend it to people all the time. And these days I find myself saying more and more, it's just like Atlas Shrugged when I see something happen, so much so that it's, it's become a joke with me and my wife, that now everything's just like Atlas Shrugged. But it's, it's right. a book worth reading. It's just you know 50 plus hours on the audio book. Um, it takes it takes some dedication, so I Ex- I'm a yeah. huge fan of it, but but it's hard to get uh, other people to to buy into that. Exactly, yeah. That's that's the tough part about what resource. It's like, man, you know, what Bitcoin means to me and the angle that I've mm-hmm. come at Bitcoin at is going to be totally different from you. And like like I kind of hinted at, you have the Beef Initiative. It's like they're they're talking with ranchers. They're speaking the language of a farmer and a rancher and a beef producer. People are going to come into it from that angle. And that's not an angle that I personally would have started off at, right? But it works. And yeah. because Bitcoin is many different things to many different people. So like I said, it's going to touch everything. This podcast you're doing is going to touch a different you know, type of person. And, and all roads lead to Bitcoin. There you go. Now, we have two more questions here. We're going to be talking a lot about Bitcoin today, obviously, as this show usually does. But beyond Bitcoin, what's a resource or an idea that's been valuable to you or your business recently? Oh, man. That's a, <laughs> that's a tough question. <laughs> yeah, I always think, you know, lately I've been using Typeform a lot. Typeform is really good to generate some leads on like, hey, you want to accept Bitcoin? Like, hit me up on this Typeform, you know. Um, but, you know, really tapping into the community. Uh, mm-hmm. tapping into local Bitcoin meetups, uh, talking with them because a lot of, a lot of people, you know, with Oshi, we're trying to spread awareness of like how to accept Bitcoin and how to use it and how to incentivize people to use it and incentivize people to accept it. And, you know, for this particular use case, we, we really need to lean on some of those passionate people on earth, the Bitcoiners. And we kind of tap into these communities, uh, providing a tool in which like they're ready for and they're looking for. Um, so for us, it's really like getting more involved in Bitcoin meetups. I myself have started a Bitcoin meetup before. I'm very active in the meetup community. Um, so so it's kind of a match made in heaven. So lean in on your community. Lean in on that. You know, this is this is a this is a peaceful revolution for everybody. Final question, and this is what we call our arbitrary but insightful question, and it's this. As a general life principle, is it better to ask why or why not? Yeah, so this is a great non-answer. I say I always ask with why. <laughs> I always start mm-hmm. with why. Because I think some people, they'll be like, oh, this is hot. So why don't we make something cold? <laughs> you know, I think I'm like, well, why is it hot? Like why? Before you understand Bitcoin, you go, well, what is money? Like why is money created by the government? Why is fiat currency? Why is this? Why is that? Why are we getting charged fees? Why are small businesses dying? Why are communities, why are we not going in the direction we need to go? And then from there, you can ask, why not Bitcoin? Why not a new way of doing things? Why not? And then you can maybe build a company off of that. So it's like, I think a lot of times people search for a problem and they go, why don't we fix it with this? I, I oftentimes say, well, why is this happening? And then I get into the why nots. You know, why mm. don't we try something different? Why not look at this in a different way? Uh, that's kind of that's kind of how I would how I look at that. But uh, yeah, it's very nuanced. <laughs> very nuanced.
Meet Linkster, your premier Bitcoin-focused advisor. Linkster caters to businesses, institutions, family offices, and high net worth individuals. They merge your unique financial goals and needs with Linkster's Bitcoin expertise to craft your own sustainable plan to preserve and grow the value of your hard-earned profits and retained earnings. At Linkster, it's not just advice, it's tailored execution. Connect directly with the founder by visiting Linkster.com. That's L-Y-N-C-S-T-E-R. Dot com Linkster. Secure your future with Bitcoin. Today's episode of Business Bitcoinization is proudly brought to you by Vellus Commerce, where the future of business technology meets Bitcoin. As we journey through the era of Bitcoin and its transformational impact on businesses, there's one name that stands out. Vellus Commerce. Whether you're looking to build a cutting edge website, a seamless mobile app, or custom software, Vellus is your go to team. They've been diving deep into the world of Bitcoin since 2014, making them one of the most experienced groups for integrating Bitcoin and Lightning payments into a variety of digital platforms. But here's what truly sets them apart Vellus Commerce doesn't just build, they bring a wealth of knowledge to ensure your project's success from day one. Their team understands the nuances of Bitcoin, ensuring that your business stays ahead of the curve. And for all business Bitcoinization listeners out there, Vellus Commerce is offering a free consultation to kickstart your project the right way. So if you're ready to future proof your business in the coming age of hyper Bitcoinization, head over to VellusCommerce.com or reach out on Twitter at Vellus Commerce. Let's make sure your business thrives in the Bitcoin era. So today we we're talking about Oshi. And to your point just a second ago about asking questions leading to new business ideas, I love Oshi. Uh, we talk about it a little bit on this show as you know, people who've listened to the last few episodes will have heard by now. But could you just give us a quick overview of Oshi, um, the need that it, it answers, and maybe how you came to the idea? Yeah. Absolutely. So the the need that it answers is that most small businesses are completely unprepared and generally uninterested in accepting Bitcoin. The the incentives at first glance, especially if they don't understand money or they don't understand what Bitcoin is, are really not enough. So that's on the business side. On the consumer side, what is the point unless you're an ideologue you know, you, you just enjoy Bitcoin for the novelty of sending a payment because it's freaking cool and it's interesting and it's revolutionary concept, honestly. What's the incentive for them to continue to do that? And furthermore, not everybody's going to be an ideologue or love the novelty of it. I can always just tap my card and I can get rewards. How am I going to incentivize people? Why are they not incentivized already? Why do they not see Bitcoin how I do, right? And it's because people see it in different different light. And then for the Bitcoiner, it's how can we give them a tool in which they can go and try to empower their community and provide incentives for businesses to start accepting Bitcoin? And they can really like hit the ground running with proof of work. They can go out and they can shake a business owner's hand or they can shake a, a rancher's hand and, and so on and actually like get this Bitcoin circular economy going. So that's why, that's why kind of we, we made Oshi. Oshi provides really easy onboarding experiences uh, for businesses from the, from the Bitcoin payment provider of their choice. They want to use Strike. They can use Strike. They want to use OpenNote, IBEX. They're down in El Salvador. Um, they use the Bitcoin Beach Wallet. If they want to use Bitcoin Beach Wallet to plug into Oshi so that they can start promoting their business, they can start offering Bitcoin rewards and incentives so they can easily start accepting Bitcoin and maybe... Maybe they still want dollars, even though they're using Bitcoin, the network, to process that payment over Lightning. Maybe they still want dollars. They can do that too. They can tap into the Bitcoin network as easily as possible and start actually providing incentives for consumers to want to spend Bitcoin instead of swiping their card, right? And, and so that's kind of, that's kind of the, the, the idea of Oshi um, on the Bitcoin, say, evangelist side, you can actually get paid in Bitcoin in commissions for onboarding a business to the OSHI app. Just share your reflink every single time that business makes a sale, you'll receive 1% of that sale in Bitcoin rewards. And likewise, if you onboard like your grandma and you teach her, hey, grandma, like you can use Strike or you can use Cash App and you can buy a coffee on OSHI, you'll get 1% of every purchase that she makes. Why we did it? I wanted to get more involved in Bitcoin. I was a travel nurse. I was trying to find a way to, you know, cater to my strengths 
uh, and spread Bitcoin, not just talk with people about Bitcoin, but actually show people how it can be used regularly, even at the local level to benefit the entire community. So I found a co-founder <laughs> and, and him and I built the thing up. And out of curiosity, how, how do you go from travel nurse to creator of an app and CEO of a company? Seems like a, seems like a stretch. Is it a stretch? You know, how did that transition happen? Yeah, maybe it's more like how did I go from a business school graduate to a travel nurse? <laughs> there you <laughs> like, go. Because I've always been very, <laughs> I've always been very, um, you know, entrepreneurial at heart. I I I, I really enjoyed economics. Um, I really enjoyed just incentives, uh, creating value. And in, in ways, and I'm not someone that like oh made all these businesses. No, I, I mowed yards. I did like odd jobs as as a kid. Like I was always driven by by money, which is you know that's how society operates. Those are the incentives, right? And um, you know, I went to business school, and I was like, I don't want to work in a cubicle, <laughs> at least not for very long. And I have no business ideas right now that that I would actually want to pursue. So you know what I'll do? I'm really interested in, in health and fitness and all this. I have some family members that were nurses, and, and travel nursing makes great money. You get to travel the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you get to find, maybe stumble across ideas, meet new people, see new ways of life. And something that I learned is like <laughs> people do not understand, even in the United States, even from one side of the state to another, how different people are, how different their political views is, how different their approach to life is. And so it was really like eye-opening for me living in Texas my whole life than going to California. <laughs> of all places. I'm like, man, this is, this is wild, like totally different way of life. And it's like, they don't know that <laughs> things are, are totally different in Texas. And the Texas people don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe they kind of do, but you know, it's, it's just, it was really interesting, but what that creates too is, is different perspectives. And, you know, whenever I stumbled across Bitcoin, I was actually on my first travel nursing assignment. And and, you know, went down the rabbit hole really fast and was totally just enamored by Bitcoin, engulfed by Bitcoin, could only think about Bitcoin, listen to Bitcoin podcasts all day, every day. I was effectively, I was effectively a full-time nurse and a full-time Bitcoiner. Or maybe I would even say a part-time nurse, 40 hours a week, but a Bitcoiner 24-7, 365 and then I said, okay, this is what I would like to pursue. This is something that I want to go all in on, come up with a business, figure out a way. And then again, first they asked why, you know, why, why aren't people using it? Why aren't businesses accepting it? And then it started to be like, what if they could, why not use lightning? Why not cut out fees? Why not empower small businesses? And that led to Oshi called up an old college friend who happens to be a legendary software engineer. And I said, hey, I got this thing. I got this idea. We should chat about it. And the rest is history. So I want you to cover maybe once again in, in just a second some of the benefits when it comes to receiving payments for the merchant, some of the incentives that Oshi encourages for the customer and then also the the benefit that is in it for the Bitcoiner who's listening right now, already bought in, the opportunity that they have. And so maybe, maybe start off with the merchant. Like what's what's the benefit for receiving Bitcoin payments? Maybe tie in a little bit about the Lightning Network right there. Absolutely. So the way I like to present it is that for thousands of years, society functioned on a cash-based society or a society in which transactions were peer-to-peer -peer using some form of cash-like instrument. You had seashells or you had shiny rocks or you had salt, uh, you know, wampum, paper money, fiat currency. Settlement was instant. It was final. There was no processing fees. There was privacy, right? And you didn't need any permission to send and receive money, right? For thousands of years, society functioned and flourished on this. The past 50 or so years, and increasingly so, have been an anomaly, in my opinion. We've now taken the payment processing to the financial intermediaries. We have to have permission to send and receive payments because you have to have access to a banking uh, service or account whenever you want to send and receive payments online, digitally, right? You want to swipe, tip, dip, or whatever, tap your card, 
you have to have a relationship with a bank. Right? There are billions of people all over the world that do not have access to that. There's no privacy, right? Privacy's out the window. They all know what you're spending on, right? And furthermore, instead of having instant settlement, it takes days or weeks to settle. Maybe before you get your money. And it's not final either. It can take up to 90 days for settlement to actually be final. Someone can always call up the bank and charge it back, penalizing you as the merchant, whether the customer is in the right or the customer is in the wrong, or the customer just made a mistake and they don't recognize this charge, and now you're going to get penalized as the business. Last but not least, I'm sure I'm forgetting some things in there too, they're going to charge you money for the privilege of doing something that for thousands of years was free. Now, every single time you swipe your card, wealth is getting sucked out of your local economy, and it's going to the card issuers, the major banks, the payment processors, all of these different intermediaries. So you can have the privilege of sending ones and zeros over the internet. So we've really lost the plot here. Bitcoin fixes this, particularly Lightning. You can now have instant, final settlement, near free to process. You can have more privacy guarantees. You don't need any permission. It is everything that cash-based money has been for thousands of years, only digital. And this is where B-commerce comes into play, not e-commerce. E-commerce is permission. You got to have a bank account, blah, blah, blah. This is B-commerce. This is e-commerce 10.0. You think we've had an e-commerce revolution so far. Like, we have not seen anything yet. We're about to have billions of people all over the world that have never had access to any sort of online commerce can do it by downloading a wallet. So whether you're accepting digital payments already or you're not, you can now leverage the Bitcoin network regardless of whether or not you like the asset. You don't have to like the asset at all. You can still receive and send payments over the Lightning Network with instant near-free settlement. That is profound because as a small business, maybe your profit margins are 2 or 3 or 5%. What if you could say, I don't want to pay that anymore. <laughs> I, if my customers pay in Bitcoin and I incentivize them to pay in Bitcoin because it's good for me, Maybe I can cut out the 2, 3, 4, 5% in payment processing fees. I just doubled my profit margin overnight for nothing. Mm-hmm. For something that didn't require permission, it's easy to get set up and it's getting easier and easier and easier. In the meantime, I have now began marketing and promoting my business. Not only have I future proofed it, but I can now say, hey, all you crazy Bitcoiners, you rabid Bitcoiners out there, or cryptocurrency enthusiasts, I accept Bitcoin, right? I'm ready to go. And as a business, it's also a great way to actually earn some Bitcoin. Whenever you sell your cup of coffee for Bitcoin, you're effectively, in a way, like buying Bitcoin. You know, it's always a trade. It's not so much me buying Bitcoin with dollars. I'm trading my dollars for Bitcoin. I'm selling my dollars for Bitcoin. Your your consumers are now going to be trading you Bitcoin for your coffee or your steak or, or your service, right? So I guess I'll pause there. That's kind of like the business aspect. Yeah. So I I appreciate the perspective from the merchant. And real quick, before I ask the next portion of it and and frame the next portion of it, you can switch the Bitcoin that you receive from people into dollars so you don't have to worry about the volatility, right? Exactly. Not only do you not have to worry about the volatility, but if you do that, you don't have to worry about any other tax implications. It just gets counted Mm -hmm. as revenue, just like it already normally would. And and a bonus to that is that, look, you're not going to have like 10% of your sales or 20% of your sales. Like it's not going to break the bank to just like dip your toes into Bitcoin and start accepting Bitcoin payments. You might have a 10th of a percent of your sales. And, And most businesses that I'm finding, they just say, look, we'll just start holding the Bitcoin. Like every time somebody buys a coffee, maybe they buy like a couple coffees a week, we'll just hold the Bitcoin. Because you know what? Now we have Bitcoin on our balance sheet like Square does, like Tesla does, like all of these, like Michael Saylor, (laughs) like MicroStrategy. You know, you want to be in that party 
Like, why not you as a small business owner start stashing away just a little bit of Bitcoin every single time your customer buys something from you? Um, that's really what I, what I propose to business owners. Like, you're going to accept a few Bitcoin payments here and there. Just hold it. It opens you up to new customers, you know. Absolutely. And that's definitely what I would I would recommend people do. But the thing is, even if you despise Bitcoin, if people are willing to pay and you get to keep a higher percentage of that payment, there's a good incentive for you to accept Bitcoin. That being said, let, let's say you decide to accept Bitcoin. Uh, you, you open your arms to the community and say, we're now receiving Bitcoin payments. Come and pay in Bitcoin. There's going to be crickets in a lot of communities because there's, there's no great incentive for the customer to pay in Bitcoin, unless you're a crazy Bitcoiner. Right. Until Oshi. So go ahead and share with us about Oshi and, and the incentive for the customer. Yeah, absolutely. So you nailed it. It doesn't matter if you're accepting Bitcoin, if you don't actually incentivize people to want to pay with it. Some people will come, but to really tap into that and, and arbitrage basically the legacy financial system, you got to provide some form of incentives. You know, this is how they got everybody to swipe their card everywhere they go. You know, it was kind of like the, you know, 2010 era where it's like the points guy was like, just, oh, get a card, get 10 cards and earn all the rewards and swipe your card and pay it off at the end of every month. You know, before that, like in 2000, I believe it was like 2005, maybe it was even 2010, I can't remember. There was only like 5% of commerce was done online. 5%. Hmm. I mean, it's only like 15% today. Okay. So, you know, that's not that great whenever your business model is like a payment provider, a card issuer effectively relies on more and more people using your card. So they're like, okay, how do we incentivize people to swipe their card for every single transaction, everywhere they go? And it's not just about like the, the rewards. It's also about the experience. And as the experience got better and better and better, the rewards generally got less and less and less, and the fees got higher and higher <laughs> And higher for, for people in businesses and online businesses or in store that were using these cards. Um, and these, these fees that the merchant has to pay are actually passed down to the consumer. So there was a study in, in 2010 by the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. Love them or hate them. This is actually a really great study. <laughs> or hate them or hate them, maybe. But it was a great study. Um, and, and I believe it was titled, um, Who Wins and Who Loses with Credit Card Payments? <laughs> it's like, I wonder. The banks win every time. Every time. The consumers feel as though by swiping their card, they are getting all of these bonus rewards and incentives. But the reality is they are paying the fees that the merchant are paying to the card issuer. And the card issuer... And the banks, the payment processors are giving you about 30% of the extra fee that you paid just to swipe your card so that they can send an online payment effectively. It's kind of a scam. So with, with Bitcoin, why don't we do the same thing? The difference this time is, though, that you can incentivize consumers to effectively spend dollars and zip them over the Lightning Network with something like Strike but receive Bitcoin rewards on the other end. And the beautiful thing about this is that as a business owner, you're not having to pay these high fees and processing and let the banks dictate how much rewards the consumer gets. You can actually say, man, we're going to save like 3% by using Lightning and we'll give like 1% or 2% back to the consumer. We'll still pocket a percent. And maybe, again, that's, maybe that could be 20 30 40% uh, additional profits for you as a business based on your profit margin. Like if you're a restaurant, the margins are low. So it's a win-win for the consumer and the business. And then the community, because you're no longer having to ship those, those fees out to Wall Street, which are largely in bed with major corporations. They're literally invested in, in these corp, launching their IPOs, like doing all this stuff, we can keep it local again. We can go back to yeah. cash-based economy. So for, for the consumer, you know, you can incentivize consumers as a business owner to change behavior, 
because it's beneficial for you, it's beneficial for the consumer, and again, it's beneficial for the whole community. So that's that's kind of where Oshi comes in. You can you can offer Bitcoin rewards, maybe on something you're already doing. You know, today I, I went to a coffee shop. It's called the Meteor. They already offer basically if you spend fifty dollars, you get five dollars back, like a five dollar coupon. They're already doing it. What if we could we reframe that? What if we could say if you buy fifty dollars worth of stuff, you'll get five dollars in free Bitcoin. That's exciting. No one wants your coffee points. <laughs> no one wants your sandwich points. And it creates there's no network effect for these small businesses. They're, they're fragmented. They have the punch card for here and a punch card for there and a sandwich punch card for there. Like no one cares. We lose them. We don't care. The Sats can be the network effect, the Satoshi's, the Bitcoin for all of these small businesses. So. I think you've laid it out well. If you're a small business owner right now listening to this, you should be very excited. But for those who are into Bitcoin, who who like what they're hearing now, what is the opportunity in front of people that could really help to drive this home to the entrepreneurial person who's hearing what you're saying right now? Talk to us a little bit about the, the opportunity for Bitcoiners when it comes to promoting the Oshi app. Yeah, absolutely. So for the longest time, I would say most people were afraid to approach a business owner. They still are. They're afraid. They're like, maybe they're afraid because maybe they don't want to hold up the line if they ask if they can pay with Bitcoin. Maybe they're afraid because if the business says, oh, we would love to learn, what do we do? They're going to be like, uh, uh, download uh, Moon Wallet? Like, and you're talking to like the barista. or something. It's like, people aren't empowered. They don't quite have the knowledge. Even even like what you would consider a Bitcoiner, through and through, they understand Bitcoin. They don't know the tools. You know, Bitcoin is vast. I've spent a lot of time on the tools. Your open nodes, your IBEXs, Galloy, BTC Pay Server, Vaulted, Strike. There's all these different tools. They all have different trade-offs. And what Oshi attempts to do is to give the Bitcoiner, again, the most, some of the most passionate people on the face of the earth, that talk about Bitcoin until they're blue in the face, much like I am now, for free. We love talking about it. Weaponize it. Mm-hmm. Give them a tool to evangelize their community, to evangelize business owners, to evangelize their friends and family and show them you can accept it. It's easy. And it's not just for the sake of accepting it. You can reward with it. You can incentivize with it. It's, it's, it's easy now. And so... You know, we're really pounding this drum, beating on this drum here. And we're like, look, if you're a Bitcoiner and you're looking for a way to, to really catch the business owner's ear and turn their heads a bit and they go, what is this? Like, I can accept Bitcoin and it takes me like five minutes to get set up. You just share your ref link with the business owner. Let Oshi do the rest. We'll get them set up. And every single sale that that business owner makes through the app you will get 1% commission effectively paid out in Bitcoin. So instead of sending it to Visa, we send it to you. There's that meme where it's like the, it's like the black guy and he's like, ah, like, I'm the captain now or whatever. It's like you're a Visa network now. You're, you're, you're helping to propagate this. You're helping to spread this to your community. You receive the rewards. It's proof of work. Mine your city block by block and get a block reward. There you go. <laughs> you should get some of those transaction fees, right? And furthermore, you can you can tell this to your friends and your family. Share your ref link with them. Every purchase they make through the Oshi app, you'll receive 1% of that. You know, and for businesses, it's 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 not just for these crazy bitcoiners like myself. Business owners have a financial incentive for their consumers to pay with bitcoin because again, it's going to save the business owners money as well. In processing fees. So if they onboard their consumer, if they teach their staff, hey, every time somebody like buys a cup of coffee here, like we're paying like five or six percent in processing fees on this Americano, make sure you tell them that if they buy it through the OSHA app or if they pay just in Bitcoin, onboard them with our own company RefLink. Now that business is going to get one percent wherever that customer spends on the OSHA app. So we're trying to really make this circular. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. viral. I hadn't even thought of that. 
Yeah, I think it's, it's amazing for, for businesses. You know, if you promote the Oshi app in your business, then um, you're, you're going to be paying Oshi a fee because you're, you're providing the incentives and all that stuff. But exactly. you're able to make some of that back if you get all of your customers on Oshi. I, I had not even thought about that arbitrage opportunity. I love it. Exactly. Uh, so real quick question, real quick question here. If business owners like what they're hearing, what should they be doing if they're they're reaching out to you? Is there anything they need to have prepared first or do you start them from zero and take them all the way to accepting Bitcoin? Yeah, you can think of us as not only a platform to take your business, let's say to take your Bitcoin accepting business to the next level and reward and promote and incentivize. But we can also help you get from zero to one. And it is getting very easy. But Mm. you're still going to need a little bit of hand-holding. We do that for free. You you go to Oshi.tech. That's our website. You go there. Oshi.tech slash bizbit. (laughs) B-I-Z-B-I-T. Oshi.tech slash bizbit. Um, So we're doing it live here, right? I mean, it's like, you know, Josh will get... A commission from your business, and it goes back into his pocket so he can fund this podcast more, right? There you go. Um, and so, you know, that's that's the really cool thing about it. So, yeah, you can go on there. There's a little type form that we have. We talked about type form earlier. And it'll just say, hey, like, what's your business name? What's your name? What's your number? We'll reach out to you. We'll contact you. We'll hold your hand. We'll be like, all right, tell us a little bit about your business. And, and we will pick the best payment provider that we feel is for you and your current situation for your business. Um, or we'll at least put everything out there for you and, and let you choose. If you're a shadowy super coder, right, if you're, if you're really wanting to get down into the tech and self-sovereign aspects of Bitcoin, we have a solution for you. If you want to make this as easy as possible, we got a solution for you. If you hate Bitcoin and you want to leverage this to get more consumers, don't worry. You just want dollars? We got a solution there for you too. We think you should hold some Bitcoin, but we're confident. We don't have to convince you why Bitcoin's good. You're going to figure it out over time as it is. Well, we just want to get you started. We want to help you dip your toes in. So that, that's how you get started. Go to our website. There's a form you can fill out. I think it's like contact sales, or it'll take you straight down to the form, I think. You'll find it. We have highly intelligent listeners. They'll figure out exactly what they need to do but oshi.tech if you're wanting to throw some extra sats my way oshi.tech slash b-i-z-b-i-t well michael thank you so much uh before we finish up are there any final thoughts words of encouragement pieces of wisdom you'd like to drop on us before we finish up today's episode yeah absolutely i think i would just say first of all now is a wonderful time as a business to start accepting bitcoin this is a little um I guess a little forward, like a lot of business owners that are maybe just getting warmed up to Bitcoin are not fully ready for this thought process, but let's just play this out. Keep this in mind. If you're a business owner, the price of Bitcoin is what, $30,000 right now? In, in years time, this is going to be crazy. Um, <laughs> people are listening to this. In, in, four, in four or five years time, people are going to be freaking out when they hear this. Yeah. So like, if you're a business owner and you want to get some Bitcoin right now, but you're like, I don't want to go to an exchange and buy it. I just want to trade my products and services for Bitcoin. You're going to want to incentivize your consumers to pay you in Bitcoin, right? So you could do 30% discount when you pay in Bitcoin or 10% or 5%, whatever you want. Most businesses are already doing stuff like this. A punch card, buy 10 coffees, get one free. That's a 10% discount effectively, right? You're already doing it. Maybe kick it up to 20, but you hold that Bitcoin that they paid you at a 20% you know, pay with Bitcoin discount, you hold that Bitcoin for a couple of years and you'll find out how many times over and over and over again that that 20% discount you gave today, May 10th, 2022, will pay itself off 10 times over as the price of Bitcoin appreciates 2x, 5x, 10x into the future. You know, I, I think... That is where it gets really interesting. So mm-hmm. for business owners, just be just be pondering that. Stew on that a little bit. Add a little bit of Bitcoin to your balance sheet. That discount, that incentive is going to be subsidized by the value appreciation and purchasing power appreciation of Bitcoin over time. As long as you hold that Bitcoin. For the Bitcoiners out there, get out there every single time you pay. Ask them if they accept Bitcoin. 
you know the answer, generally speaking. <laughs> Just ask. The conversations that I've had, whether it be the barista, the cashier, the business owner, the manager, have been a lot of fun. People are completely unaware of Bitcoin, generally speaking. Bitcoin Twitter is an echo chamber. It's a good one. I love it. But we have to realize that the majority of people have no clue what's going on with Bitcoin. They have no clue what's going on with Lightning. And, you know, they're just trying to work and, and make ends meet in a world that is working against them, right? Start the conversation. You don't have to drop on one knee and ask them, will you accept Bitcoin? <laughs> just, just ask and see what happens. I encourage everybody to do that. But be prepared if they say, no, how do I do it? Because that'll happen too. Be prepared. <laughs> Set them up with Ibex. Just go Ibex, IbexMercado.com. But anyway. <laughs> or send them your way because you're going to help them go from zero to one. That's right. Send them my way. Michael, you've given people a lot to stew on. I appreciate it. Thanks for those final words right there. And thanks for your time today. It's been a pleasure. Hey, thank you so much. It was a lot of fun, Josh. All right, friends, it's a wrap. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Business Bitcoinization Show. If you want to reach out, our email is info at bizbitshow.com. Also, if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and scroll on down to the show notes. There you'll find ways to connect with me and our guest, as well as our excellent sponsors who can help you succeed in your life and in your business. Keep building, keep growing, and until next time, keep living and leading well. If you're a regular listener of the podcast, thank you. If you want to take a further step in your support for the show, you can help us grow by listening on Fountain, a value for value podcast app on iOS or Android. If you hear something you like that you disagree with or anything else, you can share it by sending some sats and adding a comment with your thoughts. Some of you have already done this and I appreciate it. I'm going to begin reading your boosts on upcoming episodes. So if you have some insight or value to add, let the people know. Getting started with Fountain is easy. You can add Bitcoin to your Fountain wallet by using your fiat accounts or any lightning wallet and one of my favorite features is that once you're using the app you can earn sats just by listening on fountain check out the link in the show notes to get started with fountain today